Hi, good morning. Welcome to King Worldwide. My name is Lisa. This Happy, is my dad, Roy. Happy New Year, everybody. Yay, New Year. <laughs> Glory to God. Today we're talking about abundance mentality. Nice topic for the beginning of the year. Yes. Abundance in every area of life. Okay. Question. What do you think about the most? Jesus. Scarcity or abundance? Now you might say, well, nobody thinks about scarcity. Nobody thinks about shortage. Now wait a minute. Let's see. If we have thoughts or even words that say, well, I can't afford it. I, I can't have it now. That's not in the budget, et cetera, et cetera. Well, what are we going to do? <clears throat> I will say that probably for at least 30 years, I have never said in life, the phrase, I can't afford it. You never said it to us when we were growing up. I never. That's I true. Mean, uh, I'm just conscious of the last 30 years or so is that I've never, no matter what, the, is it true that I had the money in the World Bank here for everything, physically? Not the whole time. No. 30 years, maybe? No. But I did have it in my invisible account in heaven. How, how can you say that? We all do. Well, we all do. Why? The blessing. Because we are joint heirs with Jesus and an heir of God. So if you're an heir of somebody, you're entitled to everything they have. It's a limitless. So you, so you can say, you can say that you have everything that God has. And that's why I always act the way I do. Right. And so if you have, <laughs> if you have. Uh, People that say, what are you talking about? You have everything that God has. And say, well, tell, go back to Genesis, is that, that that you were created in his image and likeness, and that you are, through Jesus, you're a joint heir with Jesus and heir, heir with God, like I said. Right. And so uh, maybe maybe they'll tune it, they'll get their tuner in where they kind of understand. But most people, most people, and I'm going to tell you why in a minute, most people think about shortage and scarcity more than they do abundance. Most people do. We used to. And I mean, he, I and, did. <laughs> and here, here's the reason why, in a minute. God never planned for us to think shortage, lack, deficiency, but to think abundance. However, the world system mm. programs its people to have just enough or not enough at all. That's the world system. And there's a reason for that so that we can be controlled. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God programs all of us to have and enjoy abundance. Here's two verses that will document that. Okay, John 10.10 10 and Philippians 4.19. These are both from the Amplified Bible. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it in abundance to the full Till it overflows. Kind of neat that he used the word abundance, didn't he? Yes. Okay. And then, of course, Philippians 4.19. And my God <clears throat> will liberally supply, fill until full, your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Okay. That's two as far as a foundation for what we're talking about today. Now, the world system keeps poor people poor. Thinking that the, the the poor people, because they're programmed this way, thinking that the rich are their problem. Instead of what the real problem is, is that what they've mentally chosen to create. Someone's saying, well, Roy, that's easy for you to say because you are not in poverty and you are not poor and they don't know. And that's the reason why I'm not. It's <laughs> because of my, my thought process and because but I you weren't in, handed a silver platter, is my point. Not at all. You know, you played I, basketball on root tree roots. Yeah, but but the point is, I had early on in, in younger years for me, I had the same thoughts as everybody else in the world because I was part of the world and I and uh, I had lack of knowledge, which is my own fault. Hosea four six says that, and so um, I understand. I understand when thought process is dominated by shortage and lack and deficiency, I understand now where it comes from. Mm -hmm. And so... It's not... It's circumstances that's, and that's environment. Why, that's why I don't participate in it now because I know where it's coming from. I know who the God of this world is 
And so therefore, he has jurisdiction. It's Satan, if you have any questions. He, he has jurisdiction over everything. In the world. And so therefore, since he has jurisdiction over everything in the world, I'm not going to participate we in it. We get above it. We yeah. rule it. Okay. So the world system, as I mentioned, it keeps, it keeps people poor simply because that's what the objective is, is to, con to control. Now, let's check out this verse. Proverbs 10, 15, <clears throat> and I did from NLT. The wealth of the rich is their fortress. The poverty of the poor is their destruction. Very interesting, isn't it? Now, why is it true? Why is this true, what Lisa just read, for so many people? Because I'm convinced because I lived it, because all they think about is day in, day out, is their problems, and they're, and they're talking about financial, their shortage, their scarcity, they can't afford it. It's the same thing with every bit of the curse. If you're sick, or are you still sick? It's because all you're thinking about is how sick you are. If you're broke, all you're thinking about is where are you gonna, what are you gonna, how are you gonna pay for the next bill? When we really could just start giving, you can really start praising. And those are opposite. Those are the things of God. So how do you get that mindset? You get that mindset by getting in the Word consistently, just like Romans 12, 2 says. You transform your mind in order to line up with the higher thoughts of God than the lower thoughts that we have here in the world system. Yes. Without doing that, one, without transforming their mind, one is going to stay captive to the world system their whole life. Yeah, even if you think you're wealthy, it, it's take it'll be taken. Yeah, in Psalm, Psalm seventy three, it talks about that as far as uh, in the world system how people using techniques can go ahead and create wealth. However, as I mentioned on previous blog broadcasts, virtue everybody that I know that has accumulated financial wealth, they've lost something in return: wife, children, health. time, health, whatever. It's very it's a compromise very, with the curse. Very, very few that have not accomplished it without losing something uh, along the way. Okay. Jesus, on the other hand, was constantly training his disciples and us through his word to think abundance and how to live in the world's economy according to the heaven according to heaven's economy. That's what Jesus did constantly. Yes. And that's why the more we're in, in the Word, the more we realize that, the more it becomes part of us. And that's why we should think big. Yeah, think, and the Lord taught me in 2013, he said, if money is like widgets to me, Lisa, so get your mind off money. It's like widgets. You have everything. If you're tied to me, you have everything. I'm like, okay. And then I just keep walking it out. So widgets are good? Yeah, but it's not, I you know. don't, you know, know, you know what I mean. I know. It's easy. You don't <clears> think <throat> about it. You don't have to have it. God, I mean, he fixed, it. he brings it to you what you need. But, plus, but that thought process is not instantaneously transformed. Mm -mm. It hadn't went for me, and I don't know of anybody else that has mm -mm. been. It's a journey. It's a process that we go through as far as getting into God's word and transforming. Right. Now, we said think big. And according to his riches and glory, which Lisa read Rich. earlier in, in, in Philippians 4.19. Now, and <clears throat> so she read that as far as riches and glory in Philippians 4.19 and not according to the limitations of this natural world. I, I, th I think really what I'm trying to communicate the most is that if we live... If we live, think, speak, act in accordance with the natural world or what everybody else is doing, natural. we're going down the wrong path. Well, yes. you, can say, you can say, well, that's what everybody else does. Well, that's true. That's why we're explaining mm. is that the world system, it brings about poverty. It, it, it sustains yes. poverty. It sustains health Bondage. problems. The whole, deal, the whole deal of the curse. And if that's what you want, that's fine. But if you want the, the, the blessing of God, then you got to do something different. And we've talked about that. All right. <clears throat> if any of you <clears throat> are presently experiencing scarcity, like I did years ago, I mean, it was it un inundated my mind. 
or if you're just getting by, then study the Word of God. And here are several scriptures I suggest that you meditate on. And if you'll meditate on them, it'll come to life and it, it'll help transfer you into transforming your mind. Thinking Good. like the Lord. Okay, the first one. Psalm 37, 4 and 5. And this is from the New King James Version. Delight yourself also in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> yes. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Psalm 34, 10, ESV. They that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Praise Jesus. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He'll make thy path straight. Who will? He. Whose understanding? His, not ours, right? Right. And then um, 1 Timothy. Oh, is it first? That's okay. 617B from the New King James. So it's the second part. Saying not right. to trust in the world's riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. He gives us all things to enjoy. What she's referring to and, and I looked that up, I thought. Because okay. every, Dad, every, you are so good with all this. What well, doesn't make a difference is that no matter if I know these scriptures or not, just like these. Eyes on the page. Yeah, just just like these. I look it up. I might write it down on an outline, but before I encircle it in red, which is what we do, is that I, I take so good. my Bible. I don't care if I know it, just like there's some of the... Take and look it up, and I thought that did that. So I had two Timothy. It's okay. Oh, I know. I'm not. I'm not upset about it. It's just that. Uh, well, glory I, to God, because there isn't a um, six, a chapter six and well, two. I think it ends that, at four. That's exactly right. But I didn't I know said, it, Dad. I no, just was no, looking no. it up. No, that's fine. Praise the Lord. And then Matthew Lastly, six thirty three. It always comes back to this. It does. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, His way of doing things. His character, and all these things shall be added to you. And, you know, what's so interesting is mm -hmm. living unto the Lord, when we choose to have this mindset, we choose to trust Him, it doesn't mean, God sometimes makes the way a different way. Like, you might think that you need to pay off, your, you know, pay for your car, and he might have someone pay for it, or he might send you extra bonus, or it might just be paid off and you don't know. Like, you don't have to have it with money, and you don't have to have it with, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say, be open and don't put God in a box. Just trust him. If he said give, give. He says tithe to where you're spiritually fed, and he says sow seed. So we do it without question. And then it's our faith that let, allows him to move in the background and multiply. That's exactly right. He, he'll bring the harvest as a result of our faith. <clears throat> it's already set up. Are you done? Are you? I'm done. Glory to God. Thank We're you. Done. We're Have done. Have a good day. You too. Have a good day. <laughs>